Hey y'all, this is Travis with Hoss Tools and this is a little segment we do called Garden Goodies. It's just a compilation of short videos that we shoot on our phone throughout the week as we're walking through the gardens, harvesting things, weeding, doing whatever we have to do to maintain a vegetable garden so we can grow our own food. I really hope you enjoy it and if you have any questions, I always put those in the comments below and we'll try to answer them for you. If you live in town, if you have a small lawn or a small area and you still want to grow a vegetable garden, I'm going to give you a tip today on how you can grow plenty of vegetables on a small area. One of the crops that lends itself well to vertical gardening, which is using a trellis, whether it be a cow panel or some other type of trellis system, is cucumbers. Now cucumbers have to be trained a little bit with just a little bit of encouragement. They can grow straight up. They lay fruits on there and you can get a lot of harvest off a small area. Pole beans are another one. Pole beans love trellis. So plant them on the trellis and they grow up. They have nice pretty flowers on them and they give you an abundance of green beans and you can even let them mature out and eat the beans itself. Tomatoes. Now most people don't think about tomatoes in vertical garden systems, but when you trellis them using this string system here with a post and you encourage them to grow, right, grow straight up, they take a lot less room. So if you have those small areas and you still want to grow a vegetable garden, don't be discouraged. Just think about growing upright instead of downright. Think about growing with vertical growing systems. So there you have it. Get out there and give it a try. We got a boatload of pickles right here and we're about to try our hand at fermenting some pickles. I got all of them. I got them two bags and I got even more in the fridge. We got a big old five gallon fermenting crop there. We probably won't fill it up all the way, but uh, good to have plenty of room in there if we need it. So the recipe we're gonna go with is from this book here we got called Fermented Vegetables. And uh, we're gonna try this recipe here called New York Deli Style Pickles. We got plenty of cucumbers, garlic. We got some elephant garlic here we growed in our garden this year. So that's going to come in handy. Uh, we got some bay leaves here. We're going to use. What else do we need there? We need some red chilies. We got some of those. And we need some pickling spice. We got some of that there. And then we need some brine. So we got some pickling salt. We're going to make us a little brine with. And then the last thing says there we need some grape ogre or horseradish leaves and I got a big old hundred foot long musky dime vine out there it's loaded down with leaves so we'll top them off with some of that so I got my mandolin here and first thing I gotta do is slice all these pickles we're gonna get all this stuff added to this pot here supposedly these only take just about six or seven days to ferment good so I'm really excited about trying these fermented pickles. If you've ever tried any fermented pickles out there, let me know how you like them. And uh, if there's anything about this recipe that you might change. It's getting late in the evening here, but maybe y'all can see this. These are my indeterminate tomatoes here. The ones we've been doing the Florida weave on. We got uh, two varieties of cherry tomatoes right here. Sun gold and a uh, red variety called Sweetie. And these things are tall, they're taller than me. Some of them over there, seven, eight foot tall. And I've been doing the Florida weave on them, as you can see here, running string every so, probably every six inches or so along those T posts there. And I have run out of post. So if they get any taller, I reckon they're just gonna have to fall over. Can't do anything else. I guess I could have put some even taller t-posts there but i fear they would outgrowed those as well these things here are loading up we got a little bit of disease or something on the very bottom of them but that's that's typical with tomatoes here in the south and uh let's walk down here we can you see those right there really tall they loaded up with blooms and uh, looking real nice and healthy for the most part and I wanted to show you what we got here. Here's some right here. So we can see some of those sun golds there. I know it's dark. 
loaded up and I just picked my first harvest of them right here. Check those puppies out. Ain't those pretty. Now, this sun gold here, in my opinion, is the best tasting tomato out there. Now, it's not very big, it's a little cherry tomato, but man, the flavor on these is awesome. The cool thing is, is you can pick them when they're about light green or let them get kind of all the way orange. This variety will tend to split a little bit if they get too much water. And so you have to be kind of diligent about getting out here and getting them little tomatoes before they split. But you can let them get kind of bright orange. It just depends on how tart or tangy you like them. We like a little bit of both. So we just kind of pick everything in that color range there when we're picking them. And I'm gonna take these inside and let my little boy Ty Ty have them. He loves these things. And um, he'll be appreciative of this first little snack coming off our tomato rose here. We got our sunflowers in the ground for the sunflower showdown 2020 that we're doing with a few other channels slash pages, including ourselves, Adler Farms, Four Kids in a Farm, um, the Naked Hog, Cog Hill Farms, and Deep South Homestead. So we thought it was only fair to give those other guys a good little head start. So theirs are bigger right now, but uh, we'll catch up pretty quick. Everything starts with some really awesome transplants. You can see here, nice big old sunflower transplants. We grew in our 162 cell trays. Now we uh, came in here and put down a heap some good gin trash compost. Just gonna feed them good. We buried our drip tape, and uh, when we buried our drip tape, we also put some secret sauce in that furrow there, give them a little more feed. And uh, we got them planted one foot apart along this row. I went ahead and grew 40 of them. It's a 40 foot row, one plant every foot. Figured I just wasn't gonna beat these guys with one plant, I'll beat them with 40. And uh, I planted them pretty deep and I might even heal them. So I'm gonna lose a little height there, but I think it's gonna promote even better root structure and uh, make for some stronger, taller plants. Some of them other guys, their plants are gonna get tall and, and break off, but we're gonna make sure ours stay real tall and strong. So, you know, stick along with us and uh, we'll give you some updates as to how these things are going and how they're growing. And uh, for those other channels involved, if you guys want some good transplants, I got a few left here if you want to really step up your game. All right, so um, on a previous little short video, we talked about how we were going to ferment a bunch of these pickles. And uh, I got my five gallon crop here. Probably a little more pickles than we need, but uh, heck, I you know, go big or go home. So I got the big crop. We've made sauerkraut in here. Now we're trying these New York style ferment pickles. Let's see what we got. Take our lid off here. There's a little straggler in there. Pretty good so far. Get our weights out of there. And uh, put those grape leaves in there on top to hold down everything in addition to the weights. Keep the pickles from floating up the surface you want to stay underneath the brine. Let's get our grape leaves out of here. Look at them, ain't they pretty? Now the recipe said that they would lose a little color, which they have lost a little color, but they still look quite nice. Sitting in that brine there. And, uh, sample another one. They're really good and crunchy. I got kind of that fermenty twang to them, which we like. Really good for you, a lot of probiotics in here. And um, for our first try, I can't complain about that right there. Pretty good little recipe we did. So now, what we gotta do is we gotta get these things into some jars and get them in the fridge. Supposedly, they'll keep for like a year or so in the fridge and put them in jars. Now the one thing that um, maybe I wish I would have did different is, and it may be different when I get to the bottom here, 
but tasting some of these on the top, they don't have quite as much garlic flavor, or quite as much pepper flavor as I like. So let me show you what we're gonna do. Come over here. So we got some jars here. We got some normal wide mouth mason jars, but I was at the hardware store today and saw this guy and I thought, man, that would be really cool. Put some of these fermented pickles in. So I'm gonna um, probably put some of these to give away. And then my stash is gonna go in this big jar here. I got me some more of my elephant garlic right here and big old cloves, I cut them in half. Man, them smell good. Um, got my band, still got plenty of dried peppers here. So we're gonna um, put a few more garlics, a few more of these dried peppers in there, kind of kick it up a notch. And I'm also gonna add some of this um, pickling spice, some of this hard spice. Now the spice we used before was kind of the stuff you dissolved, but uh, this has got some cloves and stuff in it. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of that in each jar. And um, we should be good to go. Really looking forward to uh, trying, uh, seeing how these keep in the refrigerator. I don't expect the taste to change a whole lot. Hopefully they're completely fermented. And um, I still got more pickles. I mean, we're picking buckets full of pickles every day. So I think once we're done with this batch, we're gonna try another batch and we may change up the recipe just a hair, maybe add some things uh, and just keep playing with it. This fermenting is really, really easy. I like it so much better than the traditional hot water bath canning because it just doesn't take a lot of time. You just put everything in that big crock, you let it roll, and then you just put it in these jars and put it in the refrigerator. It's a lot less effort and it's a lot better for you too. As far as vegetable gardening goes, one of the prettiest things you can see in the vegetable garden, in my opinion, is some freshly healed sweet corn. Now this is our plot of temptress, bicolor quad sweet corn we got planted here. And um, looking good so far. It's probably about a foot tall. And normally I would wait a little while, probably to got about 18 inches tall before I healed it the first time. For some reason this plot right here compared to all the other plots I've got here amongst my gardens this plot has the worst weed pressure and uh, especially with crabgrass you can see a little crabgrass sprig right there now you can't see them now because I've already come in there and healed them and smothered them out but I had a lot of crabgrass coming up in between them corn stalks and you could get in there and pull weeds or try to use a hoe and not damage your plants if you want to, but the uh, best way to get rid of them is to just smother them out and heal them up. And uh, it's going to help them plants grow some better roots, stronger roots, be a little bit more stable. Some of them are a little bit lean right now just from that healing process, but they'll stand right back up straight. You know, we got hurricane season coming in pretty soon here in the south. Seems like every year, or every other year, we get some pretty strong winds. So we wanna make sure we support that corn good. And so this is my weapon of choice when it comes to healing right here. My old high arch wheel hoe, plow set. I can straddle that corn right there, come along, throw some dirt to it, smother out them weeds, give some nice support to them plants there. And, uh, if you ain't healing your corn, you should be. If your corn gets laid over by the wind, it's because you didn't throw enough dirt to it. Now we'll probably heal this again one more time when it gets about two foot tall. Probably have to do that with a rake. But uh, that healing sure does the trick and you'll see them corn plants pop. They like it. They like that soil being thrown up on the side of them stalks like that. We get a lot of questions from folks and one of the most you know popular questions we get is how do we keep the weeds down in our garden plots how do we keep them so relatively weed free now I've got three rows of squash and zucchini here I need to thin them out to one plant every two feet I'll probably do that in the next few days and one thing we do 
for weed pressure, and we've talked about this on our previous videos, is, is drip irrigation. We're just watering right where those plants are. We're not watering these empty spaces here. But when we get some rain, there's nothing we can do about that. And that's when we'll start to see these weeds pop up. Look down here, we can see some crabgrass popping up there. Maybe a little purslane. Now there's two pigweeds trying to get started. And we believe in a process called frequent shallow cultivation. So you come in here when those weeds are tiny and small and just do a light cultivation on the soil and that will keep those weeds from thriving or surviving anymore. And our choice tool for that is the old handy dandy wheel hoe here. I haven't got started yet, but I'm about to. And I can zip through this little uh, 20 by 40 section in about five minutes. So it don't take long. And um, I like to alternate between a slicing tool like the oscillating hoe or our sweeps. And then the next time I cultivate, I'll come in here with the cultivator teeth and just go back and forth with those two attachments. But you gotta get, gotta get those weeds when they're small like that. Can't be letting them go big, get a big root structure and go to seed. Gotta get them when they're small and you won't have any problems. And that's the way to keep that weed seed bank down and uh, it will do wonders for your weed pressure in the future.